Welcome, new and old friends. My name is 242, and 42 got me a story today. The second one is a special one, but the first story is about a sleepover that ended up being very scary. Make sure you're safe before you sit back and listen to these stories. This experience is why I believe in ghosts. Hey guys, I'm a first time poster. Everyone I tell this story to says it's the creepiest thing they have ever heard, so I thought I would share. I was the biggest non-believer in ghosts. Now, I believe. Enjoy. When I was 14, me and my friend, let's call him Tom, stayed around our other friends, let's call him Josh, house. Josh had recently moved into the house and there had already been a few creepy notes around the house. The context. One, it's in the middle of nowhere. There are three houses close to each other. Then nothing but fields, forest, and farmlands for miles. The three houses are Josh's, a house that belongs to two witches, and a bed site where a man used to live. However, three years ago, he hung himself in the bed site, and the police only found him when Josh's dog kept barking outside the bed site, and there was this weird smell coming from it. Every single person who lives in this house has had a paranormal experience of some kind. The brother claims one night a week, roughly, His shower will turn on and he will hear someone whistling a tune, the same tune every time. Then the shower will turn off, the whistling continues for another minute, then nothing. The mom, and this is the one that creeps me out, says she sees a woman in the corner of her room some nights. She has to turn the light on and the stepdad will sit with her until the woman has gone. The nan, when staying in the spare room, says she always sees the same shadow woman by the window in that room. So it's not uncommon to hear a scary story at this house. As a non-believer, I found excuses for each one, such as old pipes or just mistaking shadows. The mom's one? It did scare me a bit though, as I had no explanation. Maybe a dream. Josh's room is said to be safe. No one had an experience in this room and nothing weird ever happened there. So I never used to mind seeing his house, if I stayed in his room. I may have been a non-believer, but I sure wasn't willing to take my chances. Third, the house has an old cellar which has four tunnels stretching off to either side and they can't find the plans to where these tunnels go. The cellar is always freezing cold to the point where you can see your breath and whenever it gets opened, the dog goes crazy. The story. Me and Tom stayed over for the night, and we both chose to stay in Josh's room, as there was plenty of space. Everything was a normal night, a bit of gaming, late night chats about girls, nothing out of the ordinary. We fell asleep fairly early with Josh and Tom in the bunk bed. Tom was on the top bunk, and me on the floor. At around 3 a.m., I woke up to the sound of footsteps climbing the stairs. It unnerved me instantly because of the nature of the footsteps. They were very sharp and very loud, and the steps would climb all the way to the top, and then it would start from the bottom again. In my head, I had a vision of their cat climbing up the stairs, then sliding down the baluster to the bottom and starting again. 
their cat had a bed at the top of the stairs and always, without fail, slept in that bed. The family tried to make the cat stay with them, but he would always ask to leave and go to his bed. It also could not be the dogs, as they are not allowed upstairs and were normally on the opposite side of the house in their beds. So the cat was the only plausible answer for me. However, it was so loud that I did doubt myself a lot and was nervous. Could a cat really make that much noise? After about 10 minutes of footsteps, I remember calling out quietly to Tom and Josh to see if I should go check on the cat, but neither replied to me. So I decided, fudge it, let's check. I got up from the bed and walked to the bedroom door, and just before I put my hand on the doorknob, the room went ice cold. I had something, and I don't know what it is, but something stopped me from opening the door. Maybe a gut instinct? Maybe someone telling me it was a bad idea? All I know was I felt something I had never felt in my life before. Something horrible. And with that, I realized something. The footsteps had stopped. I could visibly see my breath in front of me and was frozen in the spot. I felt like something was behind the door, but I didn't know what. I couldn't turn on the lights as it was by Tom on the other side of the room and I was frozen so I couldn't get there. I just waited. I will remember the feeling until the day I die. A feeling of dread. I slowly retreated to my bed once I found my feet. I hid myself in my sleeping bag, keeping my eyes firmly on the door. The temperature of the room returned to normal. I was warm again, and most importantly, the footsteps continued again. I stared at the door all night. Eventually, I passed out. I woke up in the morning, and the door was open. I could smell bacon being cooked downstairs, and everything seemed normal. I'd eyed up the landing, but realized there was no dread in me. Nothing. Everything was back to normal. I went downstairs and saw Tom sink the table as Josh made breakfast. How did you sleep? Josh asked. I decided to be brutally honest, just in case it happened before to Josh. I said, I heard footsteps all night, loud. Didn't anyone else hear them? Josh looked slightly shocked and gestured over to Tom while mentioning that Tom had brought up earlier this morning. I remember looking properly at Tom, who looked scared. He didn't answer, so I explained more. I did call out to you guys to ask, but no one answered, so I assumed only I heard it. I remember clear as anything, Tom eyes fixed on the table, interrupted with, and you got up to check it out? Yeah, I know. I explained I was going to, but, but everything felt horrible, didn't it? Cold, like someone had thrown ice cold water over us. I thought you were going to open the door but something inside me felt like if you did, something terrible was going to happen. I was shocked. He felt it too. It wasn't me being crazy. I asked him 
why he didn't say anything. He said he was frozen to the core. What he said next scared me the most. What would we have seen if you had opened that door? Sometimes your imagination can get the better of you there. Who knows what I would have saw. Maybe a cat hearing me get up and coming to check up on. Hi boys, Josh's mom came in. Josh, you'll never believe what happened last night. We actually had Harry, their cat, come in and sleep with us. I felt sick. The cat wasn't in the bed for the first time since they lived there. So, it wasn't the cat. It was definitely something else. What was climbing the stairs? Whoever it was, they heard me coming. And if I had opened the door, what would they have done to me? Who protected me? I will never know. Following note, Tom never stayed there again. It took me six years, but I stayed there when I was 20 for his 21st birthday party. Nothing unusual happened. Let me tell you the story on my own footsteps. This story I just read made me think of this. And yes, this is really 242's real paranormal ghost story. Let me start by telling you my house layout. When you entered the house, you had a living room to your left that was divided by a half wall. In front of you to the left was the dining room, and straight to the front was the kitchen. You could see right into it. Now, to the right past the closet was my bedroom door, which was really a den. I slept on the main floor, and everyone else slept upstairs. It worked, and it had to be done. I was the only one in my house to see or feel anything paranormal. No one else was ever disturbed, and it's my theory that I was sensitive and more attractive to the paranormal. My room was sealed to not let ghosts in. I had done this to protect myself and to make my room my space. The Event When I was 15 or 16, I was staying up late like you do as a teenager. I was watching TV with my cat, Sammy, next to me. I hear these high heel shoes start walking. These footsteps are going from my bedroom door to the kitchen and back again, always stopping in front of my door. Sammy was looking at the door, her fur puffed. I thought about why my mom would be up and wearing high heels this late. She worked in the morning. No, this can't be my mom. Just ignore it, I thought. And it will go away. And at some point, it did. The next morning, I said nothing. No point, really. Just some ghost. Pointless. The next night, it happened again. It was two sets. One male dress shoes and one female high heels. They sounded like my parents' shoes to me. It was 12 a.m. at least, and this time, Sammy was mad. She was staring at the door. The footsteps kept going from my bedroom door to the kitchen and back. They would wait a second or two and do it again. I felt like they were facing the door. This time, something is screaming in me not to open that door, not to go near that door. I was scared, terrified, like nothing has ever done to me. I do not want to go near that door. I wanted those footsteps gone. And at some point, it did go. Either I passed out or they faded away. I can't remember anymore. The next morning, I asked, wanting my parents to somehow be the cause. Something to make those footsteps something normal. But no one was awake, and I was the only one up. Those footsteps were something evil, and I believe that to this day. 
That house had many spirits come and go, and some did stay. To this day, when I think of those footsteps, I start to shake. Say whatever you want in the comments, my friends. But this is my real story. This is what happened to me. It scares me to my core. And I would love if someone could tell me what this was. I wanted to know since that day. Thank you for listening to my stories tonight. Please leave me a comment on what you think, my friends. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button and make sure it feels it. If you'd like to hear more, then please subscribe and turn that bell to all notifications. Come back this Thursday for two stories. I think she's looking at some legal advice. Enjoy this spooky, scary Sunday and have a good night, my friends.